Welcome yeah. to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caraval from ZK Research, and I'm here on site at Cisco Live 2023. I'm inside the world of solutions uh, at Cisco Live in uh, in sunny and hot Las Vegas, and I'm here with Thomas Scheibe, and you are, uh, your title is now? Yeah, I'm the VP Product Management for the Nexus Portfolio in Cisco. Yeah, so you're a data center guy. Indeed, indeed. Yeah. I and uh, as I mentioned, we're here at Cisco Live, and this is the second Cisco Live since the pandemic, but really I think the first one where the audience is back to where it was pre-pandemic, wouldn't you say? You, you're absolutely right. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really good bus. It's good to see all the customers back here, and yeah, it's fun. And I think what's uh, been interesting to see, I think there was a lot of announcements made yesterday, and I think um, from a Cisco perspective, typically at a Cisco Live, they throw a whole bunch of new boxes at you, right? And uh, But the theme of this show, to me, was about operational simplicity, Cross product, you know, cross portfolio optimization, and I think the company has really taken simplicity to heart. And I know that's been a big part of Nexus for a long time, correct? Correct. Yeah, yeah. I'm a little bit when you say throwing boxes, but yes, <laughs> I mean yes, we do have switches. Yeah. But really, the focus is on operational simplicity and excellence for our customers. Yeah. And you see this, right? It's just the feedback we're getting. Well, Cisco for years has had a best-in-class product portfolio. Yeah. It's just making it so all the features could be used easily without having to, you know, have your IT pros that do a lot of heavy lifting. And, and I mean, that's it. I mean, we still have the best-in-class. I yeah. you know a little bit self-promotion here, but it really the focus is really what customers want to do operationally because in the end, that's where the cost is for them. And so operations, operations, operations. Now, we are going to talk about some of the new features announced uh, in uh, the keynote during John Davis's yeah. portion. Uh, but first, I, let's talk a little bit about just industry trends here. The, yeah. Yeah. Data center is an interesting place because as the cloud has grown, mm -hmm. uh, there was a lot of rhetoric that we wouldn't need data centers anymore. Yeah. And everything would move to the cloud. In fact, people have asked me, do I think everything will eventually move to the cloud? And my response has always been, maybe one day, but that would be so many years from now that I'll long be dead. So <laughs> as an analyst, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, and, and so what are you seeing? Like, yeah. uh, in fact, I've seen the opposite, where there's been a move to repatriate workloads and data back to data centers. Yeah. I Listen, I, I think the problem was when people use the term cloud, they really think most of the time public cloud, and that's not what's happening, right? A lot of things moved, and to your point, things are coming back, and that just has to do with TCO, right? Everybody yeah. will at some point have to log what's the cost and what's the trade off, how fast they get stuff done. What I do think happen long term is the cloud as a cloud as an operations model, and cloud as consuming infrastructure as a service. That will stick, but yes, where the workloads are running, that's swinging actually very widely. Right, so the answer to the question for most companies is cloud, yeah. but the other question is what type of cloud, correct? correct? Yeah, and to me this is about workloads. Yeah. And I think that's going to determine what type of cloud you use. In fact, I, the analogy I've used, it's a little bit like if I were to ask you, is a Toyota Prius or a Ford pickup truck more efficient? Most people would say the Prius, but if I told you that the task is to haul 5,000 pounds of gravel across the state, you'd probably pick the pickup truck because that's, that's better for the workload. I love that analogy, yeah. right? And I would throw in the Tesla, if you want to actually drive without having to pay attention, yeah. you would pick that car, right? Yeah, but not haul gravel. Correct. Yeah, and uh, so uh, what about edge? This is another term that's been bandied about a lot. Uh, what, what is the edge and how does that fit into this cloud? Yeah, this is similar to cloud to me. It's like edge means a lot of things to different people. Uh, to, to me, it's really is where the data sits and need the work that needs to be from a performance, latency, response time uh, perspective. And, and edge is this thing really, what really means to me is like the data center becomes distributed, right? Distributed is whether it's your own four walls, whether it's public cloud, whether it's a colo, that's just, that's just where the data lives and where the work is gonna live. And that can mean a lot, a lot of different things. Yeah, so so now let's get down to the announcements. Yes. Uh, it's uh, The first one was the Jonathan Doctor was around sustainability, which is great because uh, I can't talk to a, a business or IT leader today, especially about data center, yeah. without talking about sustainability, because uh, it is top of mind for uh, for companies today. So what is Cisco doing in the area of sustainability for its customers right. here? It's, we're on this actually for a long, long time, but if you ask particular data center, a couple of items, you're right. This is one of the top three questions I get all the time, sustainability. Uh, what, what really drives us is energy costs went up over the last two years, and power grids are getting very much stretched, which means a lot of enterprises actually don't have enough power in their racks. So the question is, we have all these workloads that we need more power. Uh, how do I deal with the situation? How do we make this work? And so what we announced yesterday, what was the first step is you ought to have telemetry out. Uh, power consumption, you ought to be able to visualize that because if you have that data, then you can drive decisions whether you want to rebalance, you want to refresh your infrastructure, what you're going to do. And so that's really where it starts. And then obviously there's a lot of work going on to make the, the products better. Yeah, uh, so 
the, the refresh itself makes things more sustainable. Yeah. Uh, but so what kind of data are you showing in Nexus dashboard to help us sustain? So it? yeah, what we, what we basically did is we always could pull power data off our own switches. But as most people know, right, that's like probably 10% of what's going on in Iraq. And so we partnered up with uh, Pendrive and Vertif to actually get through the PDUs that most customers have power data for every device that sits in a rack, so you have actually a complete view. Well, that's great. And uh, in fact, the data uh, is really a missing piece today. I saw a data point a couple of weeks ago that 90% of organizations now have net zero goals, Yep. but only 10% can actually measure their progress towards it because they don't have the data. And that's precisely where we're yeah. going to help customers to start there. Because if you don't have that, you don't know what to do, or you actually you don't quite know what the best way is. And so if you're looking at Nexus dashboard with a lot of that info, what kind of actionable insights does it give you? So one is clearly you can just uh, check your trend over day, over week, seasonality, that's one. The other one you can log on, this is not just the power, and we translate based on location, <laughs> and what that means with respect to carbon emission, because that's what you really want to tra track for its net zero, right? And so you can do this translation to the metric that matter. And the other one you can do is then when you want to balance redeploy things, site one, site two, you have that information. And then to your point, if you ever do refreshes or expansion, you can make this in the right locations and actually have an idea of what the improvement is going forward. All right, now the other announcement was around AI ML capabilities, <laughs> and let's face it, I can't go outside without getting hit with something that says AI on it, right? So AI has become the hottest trend over yeah. the last few years. Now, in reality, Cisco's been using AI for a decade or more, right? I, yeah, I mean, I'm <laughs> smiling for the same reasons, but yes. So what we basically announced, and I think you heard it yesterday too, is everybody wants to talk about it, and right? The, the benefit, I think, is very clear for most enterprises. You can use that technology to help with your product development, you can help with us to do better customer support. And so every enterprise wants to know, hey, AI ML, how do I do this? And then the next question for the data center guy is, hey, do I need a new network for this? And the answer to your point, we actually have worked in this area, how to actually do Ethernet networks that can have different workloads like high performance compute, AI ML, to run this over a shared Ethernet network in the data center. We actually have a bolded experience in this space for the last five or six years. And so for us, we basically said, here's the blueprint, here are the products. How do you, uh, how do you deploy AI ML workloads? Either in your existing fabrics or if you need new and higher performance fabrics, how this is going to work. And so give me an example of some of the AI ML capabilities. Uh, so what really comes down from a network perspective, right? The terms you always hear, hey, there is a backend networks where I have to connect my GPUs with, you know, if I transfer a network, this means, oh, I need 100 or 200 gig, and I need lossless performance on a network. And then you have your front end networks where you have your IP storage or the outside connectivity, that's typically 100 gig normally, so that. And so then the question the customer asks, hey, how do I do this? Do I need two different networks? Cost a lot of money and power? The answer is no, you need one, it's an Ethernet network. You have capabilities in the network today that can do all of this, that can lossless behavior for GPU, GPQ from the yeah. At the same time, you do normal Ethernet for the rest of traffic. And so that's really what the blueprint is about. Yeah, in fact, I was talking with uh, a machine uh, data scientist about the yeah. where in order to make AI uh, really perform well, you need uh, fast processors, which are GPUs, yeah. fast storage, which is NVMe and flash yeah. storage, but you also need uh, fast and non-stop operations of your network. Yep. And I think Cisco's licked the fast for a long time, and the AI to me allows the network to adapt without having to do a lot of, you know, hunting and pecking with the CLI, correct? No, that's precisely yeah. it. And so what BBC did is, you can, as I said, you can dynamically manage congestions based on what workload you want to prioritize. And then we basically just put the playbooks together and through the Nexus dashboard uh, fabric controller, the settings, how do we actually configure this automatically? So it is really very, very easy to do for any customer that has a Nexus fabric to actually get this run. So is it fair to say that it'd be hard to move forward with any kind of AI strategy uh, from a business perspective without having AI brought in from an operational perspective? I, the way I think about, yes, you want this because I do believe if you don't have that, you are at a disadvantage from a business operations perspective. Yeah. Any general enterprise, absolutely I do. I actually think just the economics of it, when I've talked to uh, companies about this before, um, uh, data scientists make a lot of money. <laughs> They're some of the highest paid people in the companies and what happens is they start these infancy models and uh, uh, you know they, they wind up having to wait you know, six hours a day, two days sometimes for these things to yeah. finish. And so if you have the right infrastructure in place with the right operational model, these things can take 
you know, a quarter, a tenth of the time sometimes uh, to finish up and then you're getting, you know, more bang for your buck out of those uh, data scientists. So. Yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> don't, don't, I mean, yeah, there's clearly, there's yeah. clearly a lot of things you have to think through from a setup, but you're absolutely right. There are two phases, right? You have your data, you need to build your model, which is people refer to the large language models. How do we actually get the, the, the things together as the, as the parameters? And then you have the inference where you just say, hey, I get the data and I get protected outcome. And we can operationalize this really, really well uh, with the fast network that we have and then obviously with the partners in the space that provide the GPUs and the servers. All right, well thanks for that update, it was great. It was, in fact, it was really nice to see uh, Nexus get some uh, you know, main stage time on day one in the keynote, but yeah. what, what's coming for Nexus? What, what should customers expect to see in the future? Yeah, I mean, what comes for us, and as we touched on is right, there's three things that really matter for us, operational simplicity. We're on this path with Nexus Dashboard, and obviously you heard about the Cisco networking cloud. Yes. So that will be linked to that as well. The other one is sustainability we touched on. I think there's a lot of designs visibly, there's things we can do on the system side to get power down over time, leveraging our silicon, more smarter system designs. And then AI ML, you know, like quite frankly, I see a lot of discussions on going on how to optimize it, how to connect these GPUs. There's the inevitable discussion, is it 200 gig, is it 400 gig, is it 800 gig? So It's whatever it is, whatever the And the way is. I think about whatever it is, yes. Yeah. But there's clearly a lot of work in these three areas going on. Actually, you open the can of worms on silicon. Talk about the silicon. I, I, there's a, a lot of debate in the networking industry. Should you use merchant? Should you spin your own? And I think Cisco gets accused sometimes of, you know, you're not supporting. But frankly, spinning your own silicon gives you a lot of advantages, both in power and cost, correct? Well, yeah, to me the debate is really not is it merging or non-merging. To me is do you have the best silicon to get the job done, right? Yeah. And so that's the way we look at it. Um, silicon is very important, I think, as everybody realized in the last two or three years, because you want to drive performance, silicon has a big influence. Yeah. And so we see silicon as a value driver to actually get into the outcomes. And so that's why we invest in that. I actually don't think a lot of, everybody does understand the role of silicon because uh, so much of what I, you know, from my peers and other competitive companies, they talk about doing everything in software. And Cisco's got a tremendous software business, no doubt about it, but some things are best optimized in software, some in hardware, and some in silicon, and all those things have to work together. That's right? the best way to put yeah. it, right? I think it's the combination, it's not one or the other. Yeah. You want the software to find networking, the automation capabilities, but you want the foundational performance that comes out of silicon, there's no doubt about it. And if you look, and that's what I'm saying, everybody, and maybe that's just where I'm sitting, but if you look, all the innovations that are currently people talk about is CPUs, DPUs, GPUs, yeah. Network, network silicon, which are the NPUs, clearly there's value in the silicon. I think the, the larger ecosystem that focus on performance understands it, and we see that. Yeah, and that's interesting too, because with all the different XPUs, yes. we're putting silicon in different places now. It's you know not just one central place to do different things to optimize yeah. performance. Yeah. So. Well, Thomas, thanks very much for the update on Nexus. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time in another video. Thanks, Zeus. It was fun Thomas. as always. Thanks. Cheers. Yeah.